Okay, a linear transformation is called self-adjoint if in an inner product between u and v, one of the vectors is affected by the linear transformation. The linear transformation applies to one of the vectors. So for example, it can be applied either to a or to v, and if it doesn't matter, if the result is the same, whether it is applied to u or whether it is applied to v, if it doesn't matter which of the two vectors you're applying the linear transformation to, then the, main, then the transformation is called self-adjoint. Now you can make sure that the reflection is a self-adjoint transformation. These transformations are often called symmetric because matrices that represent them are supposed to be, often mentioned to be without caveats, but there is a caveat, uh, by symmetric matrices. So there is a caveat. Let's discover what that caveat is. Actually, let's forget what uh, the books say. I'm sure some of the books are correct. Uh, and let's discover for ourselves what property of the matrix representing the linear transformation A can we expect. All right, so here we have AU. In tensor notation, it would be written as A I K U K. And we're dotting it with V J, which would be written as Z I J because that's what the inner product is. It's Z I J affected U I V J. So that's here's matrix. Here's the tensor notation representation of what we have on the left. This being responsible for the inner product. This is the component of affected u, and this is the component of v. Let's write on the right hand side what we have here. Here we have u. Well, we'll need a place to stick in the metric tensor. So let me start a little bit further away from the equal sign. So we have u i. You know what, I think I will want to call it UK so that it'll match this one. So let me call it UK. UK. Okay. And then we need to write down the component of AV. And I'll write it as A. So we want VJ. So I'll write it as A I J V J. And now we need to dot this and this. And of course, it's the metric tensor that does the dot. A, Z, I, Z, K, J. Z, excuse me, Z, K, I. Z, K, I. And the nice thing about the tensor notation is that we don't need to worry really about the placement of indices. Excuse me. That we do have to worry about. We don't have to worry about the order of the terms. So even though this might not make sense in matrix notation if we wrote them in the same order, we'd have to think much harder and be much more careful writing this in matrix notation. Tensor notation doesn't really care. And I would say the magical words, because it doesn't matter which vectors u and v we use, because it works for all vectors u and v. I don't want to make it as a blanket statement that you can just always erase them on both sides, but if you think it through, it'll work in this case. Here is the ultimate property that we have. Uh, again, I'll, slice, I'll start slightly to the left because we'll actually write it down in different forms. Z, I, J, A, I, K must equal Z. Well, let me just write it in the same order. Z, A, I, J, Z, K, I. All right. And now let's interpret it from the tensor calculus point of view. You know, you see what it's going to say. Let's, let's look at, first, let's just see that symmetric thing. So if I use the index juggling formalism, and just use this to lower the index. This would be A, A, excuse me, A, J, K. And this would be A, K, J. A, K, J. Hey, C, 
symmetric symmetry. So it is represented by a symmetric matrix after all. Huh. But why isn't this symmetric? Well, what that matrix is, it's not this matrix. It's this one. It's the matrix representing this tensor. So, and that's the natural form in which matrices appear in linear algebra. So in this form, as we have it written down, there is no claim of symmetry. There is something like a claim of symmetry that you'll see in a moment, and then you'll realize it doesn't mean symmetry at all. Okay? But what this is saying is that with the index lower, the matrix is symmetric. So um, linear algebra actually kind of needs index juggling. Some of the statements would be cleaner with index juggling. So with the index lower, the matrix is symmetric. So there is no claim that the matrix representing the linear, the linear transformation is symmetric for self and joint transformation. It itself is not symmetric. It's only with the index lower that it's symmetric. So if I consider this would be symmetric. And how do we get this? We have to lower the index. In other words, here, let's see, we have to multiply it on the left. Now, for this matrix, it doesn't matter whether it's the matrix or it's transpose because it's a symmetric matrix. The metric is, of course, symmetric. So, and we have to multiply A on the left. So, this is not symmetric, but this product, this product, look, what I'm doing is a matrix notation, lowering the index on this matrix. And lowering the index means multiplying by the transpose, excuse me, by the metric tensor. Okay? And the result is, I did this before, and if I recall, I'll double check after I'm done recording, the result is minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, 0, and voila, a symmetric matrix. So we have to back away from the claim, uh, of course nobody makes that claim. Uh, I'll tell you in a moment what most texts would say when they say that the matrix is symmetric. Okay, but the claim should really be this, this product of the gram matrix with the matrix representing the linear transformation is symmetric. Now the reason why it's often said that self-adjoint transformations are expressed by symmetric matrices, it's because this basis is often used. Or actually, if you think about it, for any orthogonal matrix, for any nearly orthonormal, nearly orthonormal, it just has to be orthogonal in equal length. So orthonorm, orthonormal-ish uh, basis, what this matrix is is identity or a multiple of it. So lowering the index is like multiplying by the identity or, or multiple of it. So the result is symmetric, but that means the original matrix is symmetric. So if you limit yourself to orthonormal bases, then yes, that statement is true. Self-adjoint transformations are represented by symmetric matrices. But that's only true in orthonorm for orthonormal bases, or scaled orthonormal bases, or maybe some other exceptions. In general, it is not true. In general, it is this product. And of course, it was tensor, the tensor calculus notation that showed it to us. Now, if we last one last thing, if we wanted to go from this, which is not quite this matrix, to the matrix itself, let's just raise J up on both sides and see what we'll get. Um, let me raise K on both sides and call it I. And on the right hand side, we'll have A I J, which is this matrix. On the left hand side, raising k and making it i. Well, here it's the second index. On the right, it's the second index. So the only way to write it is a, j, placeholder for the index, i. <coughs> These two matrices are also equal. But that doesn't mean that this matrix, which is in other words, that matrix is symmetric. It just means that this matrix, if you lower this index and raise this index, then you'll get the transpose of this matrix. 
So these matrices are completely different. When you see something like this in tensor notation, it does not mean enter uh, entry by entry equality of the transposes like it does in matrix notation. There is so much information in this notation and the placement of index that when you translate it to actual numbers, that requires a little bit of careful thought. Uh, in tensor calculations, you can just blow right through them and the tensor formalism will carry you through. But when, if you're faced with the task of taking symbols and turning them into tables of numbers according to the matrix formalism, you have to be careful. Okay, so, so I consider this a big success. We've actually answered all of the questions that we plan to answer. And I think that the highlight was explaining why self-adjoint transformations are not always represented by symmetric matrices and actually correcting that fact a little bit. Uh, it's this product of the gram matrix with the matrix representing the linear transformation that is symmetric. And it was tensor calculus and the tensor calculus notation that helped us answer all of those questions. All right, thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.